There are some evidences about the role of pranayama and role of uh, prana basically. Uh, there are lot of actually uh, research studies on the impact of pranayama, but how to locate prana and how to uh, study prana in an objective, uh, very feeble and uh, uh, more positivist way that is a big question, because it is subtle. Uh, it is not fully objective and uh, we can look at its impact. So, there are only inferential methods through which we can uh, get sense of what prana is and we can uh, prove the existence of prana. Uh, so, in the 2018, this is the sixth edition of uh, fundamentals of uh, complementary, alternative and integrative medicine. Uh, there is a chapter written by Staples. Staples compiles various uh, studies which point out the existence of prana and uh, for the convenience we can club these research findings into the three streams. There are uh, studies which suggest that right and left cerebral hemisphere of the brain are connected with the right and left nostril breathing. Uh, so, there are some uh, EG reading based studies which suggest that uh, when the right nostril breathing take place, uh, the left hemisphere becomes more active and when the uh, left nostril breathing takes place, the right hemisphere related activities and the, the part of the right hemisphere shows more activity. To corroborate this idea, we all know that left uh, hemisphere or what we call loosely called left brain uh, is more related to the logical thinking, uh, verbal abilities and right brain thinking is more about lateral uh, thinking, more creative thinking related to imagination working with the space etcetera. So, the subsequent research looked at the impact of right and left nostril breathing on verbal ability and the spatial test uh, and the scores in the spatial text. The, the hypothesis was substantiated. So, left nostril breathing enhances score in the spatial test scores and uh, right nostril breathing enhances uh, the scores in the verbal ability test. So, this is a, a kind of a validation of the life uh, of the differential impact of the right nostril breathing and left nostril breathing, which is the fundamental aspect of the pranayam. Uh, another example is uh, given about the ultradian uh, rhythms. Ultradian rhythms are the rhythms of the internal organs like kidney or pancreas and the rhythm of these internal organs are found to be connected with the different uh, nasal cycles. So, these are three examples which suggest that uh, right nostril breathing and left nostril breathing have differential impact of course, the complementary impact, but of course, the distinct impact on our body system and as we move further we will see these nasal cycles have impact on our emotional uh, makeup as well. I remember uh, I was offering this session to the group of doctors in I am Ahmedabad, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Rajesh Chandwani who invited me to conduct this session uh, for the doctors. And there when, when I was explaining the right nostril breathing and left nostril breathing and the differential impact, there was a sense of puzzlement in the room, because most of the medical professionals look at uh, the fact that ultimately air, whether it is taken from the either of the nostril goes to the same uh, sac. So, how come it can have a differential impact, but these studies suggest that these are having the differential impact. Uh, nonetheless, this suggests the that the idea of uh, Chandranadi and Surinadi. 
from here onwards things become even more subjective, things become even more difficult to validate objectively, because uh, nadis as, as, as mentioned earlier are the channels through which the life energy flows that is the uh, that is an idea about the pranic structure of our body. Ida, Tingala and Sushumna, these are supposed to be three principal nadis or principal channels. Ida is connected to Chandraswar or left nostril breathing. Uh, right nostril breathing is called Suryaswar and it is connected to Pingala. When Ida and Pingala are in the perfect balance, uh, energy flows through Sushumna which is in between these two nadis. So, uh, that is the next step in the uh, pranic system as explained in the uh, yogic literature as explained in many other literature uh, what, uh, what, what was referred just now. There are some other sets of references which suggest that pran is a source of energy which is distinguishable from the more physical sources of energy. And these examples are taken from the book of uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Parker. He mentions three things, uh, movement without mus muscle tension. So, he gives example of Swami Vedabharati. Uh, in USA, he was uh, conducting a session on biofeedback and he allowed a doctor to fix the instrument which assess the muscle tension in the body. When the reading was seen by the doctor, doctor became little puzzled and afterwards he started chuckling and uh, Swami Vedabharati asked what, what, is, what is his amusement, <laughs> why he is chuckling and uh, doctor said that your reading of the uh, muscle tension is similar to that of a corpse almost like a dead man has so low muscle tension. But here is Swami Vedabharati who is standing, who is explaining the concept, who is using the uh, blackboard, writing things, all normal activities, but muscles were so deeply relaxed. So, uh, Stephen Parker infer that this is the sign of prana and suggests that other than the normal well, uh, normal objectively verifiable energy, there is another form of energy, when it is active it can sustain the physical body and body was sustained because of that uh, uh, energy called prana, which cannot be captured by the instrument which is made to assess the muscle tension. So, there is a very off quoted experiment conducted in 1964 led by rather observed by uh, Dr. Kothari and the colleague. So, this experiment was about a sadhu who was uh, uh, who sat under the earth surface uh, all surrounded by the mud and gradually uh, his life vital signs start coming down. It reached to the level which was similar to a dead body, but at the stipulated period of time after few days when this uh, hole was opened up and uh, there was no way he could get oxygen and uh, uh, supplies of water etcetera. Uh, gradually his at the stipulated time his life signals is started coming back. So, this is one of the great puzzles of science. There is another uh, 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 set of examples which is about uh, uh, brain waves. So, when we are conducting something, when we are doing something, a different kind of uh, uh, brain waves uh, are emitted through our brain predominantly. These for example, we are in a very resting stage, a different kind of brain pattern emerges. When we are, when our brain is highly active, another very different kind of uh, uh, brain waves emit. There are yogis and there are studies which suggest that uh, uh, beta brain wave which are uh, which are emitted in a deep restful states are emitted by the brains of yogis 
when they are in a waking consciousness and carrying out the normal day to day activities, sometimes even carrying out uh, intellectually demanding activities. So, uh, uh, these examples suggest that, that, that the form of energy which is objectively very fable is not the only energy available to us and uh, based on these we can infer that there is a another form of energy which is not objectively verifiable as of now and that can be called prana. That is why this uh, beautiful picture uh, taken from this, uh, uh, this website akramyog.co.uk, it uh, compares the Chandranadi and Suryanadi with Shakti and Shiva. Shakti is the energizing aspect of self, uh, Shiva is reflection of the calming aspect of self and uh, left and uh, right nostrils are connected to uh, Chandra or uh, Surya Nadi and um, this is the pictorial representation actually uh, very symbolic and represented in a beautiful with the beautiful symbol of Shiva and Shakti.